Oh, good ball, Gary. That's the one. Beautiful golf shot. What a golf shot. You never lose a match. The worst crime that we have done against humanity is that we planted this idea of heaven in people's head. Next five years are crucial for making this nation cross a few thresholds. Let us all get together and make that happen. I mean, I'm 83 now, I don't feel like I'm an old man. I mean, I've got tons of energy, work hard, go to the gym, travel hard. It's all right to die, but you don't have to get old <laughs> <laughs> oh, But are you scared of dying? Huh? Are you scared of dying? Not at all. Why? Not at all. Huh? I've lived a full life. <laughs> yeah. I live every day like this the last day, <laughs> so I'm not sure. <laughs> are you a good sleeper? Oh, yes. I. For twenty-five years, I managed with just about two and a half to three hours of sleep. Really? A night? Yes. Yeah. A night? These days, on an average, I'm getting lazy sleeping four and a half hours. Wow! <laughs> you know, when my wife and I sleep nine hours. We sleep nine hours. That means half the life you'll sleep off. <laughs> <laughs> if I had two and a half hours sleep, I'd be sitting here like this now. No, uh, body does not need sleep, it needs restfulness. If you know how to keep yourself restful, the sleep quota will just go down. That's a good point actually, isn't it? When we perform action, we have wanted to be successful, there's no question. But today, you watch all the successful people, they are spreading a message, success is misery, success is suffering. Once you spread this message, next generation will not seek success. This may not be articulated in their mind. But they will not seek success because they're looking at the successful you and they don't want to be like you. They think they're better off smoking pot and they are. See, actually. that's true. So, for you to be successful, the most important thing is your pleasantness in the body, pleasantness in the mind, pleasantness in the emotion and pleasantness in your life energies. You complicate our lives to ridiculous extent because it's just the way of the world. Absolutely. There's no such thing as too much. Human, <coughs> human being is geared to do a lot. The problem is, most human beings, their own mind is against them. When your intelligence turns against you, uh, then you're finished. <laughs> so you may call it stress, you may call it anxiety, you may call it misery, madness, whatever you like. Essentially, it's your intelligence turning against you, isn't it? I love that. Mm. Is there any other reason? Consciousness is not some strange thing happening somewhere. You're alive and you know that you're alive because you're conscious. If you're unconscious, you don't even know whether you're alive or dead, isn't it? You don't even know whether you exist or not. So, you are conscious, the question is only how conscious. So right now, let us uh, see consciousness less as light. Let's say there's just one light here in this hall, we dim it. Now it shows only these two people. Other people are not missing in my vision. What do I think? I think only these two people exist in this hall. You brightened it up, I suddenly see four people. Oh, suddenly four people are in this hall. Now somebody turned it on, oh, ten people are there. They put it on full brightness, now I see everything and everybody in all detail. This is all consciousness is, everybody is conscious. The question is only how, how conscious. Everybody is awake, but question is only how awake are you right now? So that is why the word in India, we always use the word awakening. Antoine, am I awake? I am awake. But you can get more awake than what you are right now. You can get further more and more awake to a point if you become fully awake, the entire creation is in your perception. The worst crime that we have done against humanity is that we planted this idea of heaven in people's head.
We told them there is a better place to live than this. Here you can live wantonly, do stupid things to each other, somewhere else everything is going to be fantastic. <laughs> this one idea has… have made us so gross and insensitive to everything around us. This idea, if you… if you're not eating well here, no problem, there it'll be fantastic. You didn't get your drink today, doesn't matter, there rivers flow with wine. Whatever little pleasures you want, don't worry, their virgins are waiting in dozens for you, whatever, nonsense. I'm saying just this idea that this is the damn place where you have to do your best to live at the highest level possible. There is no higher place to live. This has to sink into all of us. If we want to live in a great way, this is the place, isn't it? Amen. I'm asking you, do you have any proof that you're not already in heaven and messing it up? Humility in victory and gracefulness in defeat is the mark of great men. It takes great men to make a great nation. At this time, when the election results are out and people have expressed their will, all of us, whether the contestants who have won and those who have lost must remember you are only weighing to see who can serve India better. This is about serving the nation and the people of this nation.